day, good day. So, today, clutch time. So the gearbox is off, as you've watched the last video. So next is, take the clutch off. So I've already took mine off, I'll just give you a quick rundown how to do it. There you go, you see mine's off. What you want to do, you want a six mil, well six millimeter Allen key, and you want to crack them all open. Crack them all open, don't take them out, just crack them. Make sure they're all cracked open before you even remove any. When you crack them open, start with the top, remove the top ones first. Hold your, put your finger in between to hold the clutch plate and everything in place and push against your flywheel. And just start taking them all out. When you got them all out, it will just either fall off or you just pull it off. Then, because I'm waiting for my new clutch to turn up, it should be here today or tomorrow, I just put the only key, well, put the bolts back in so I don't lose them. So, yeah, pretty simple, really. So, you've got the gearbox off. So, what we'll do next is we'll give it all a good clean, all the flywheel in that. I can't see no burn marks or right on it, so. I don't have to replace the flywheel, so that's a bonus. So yeah, don't look worn. This was done about 100,000 miles ago, new clutch and flywheel fitted. The last owner did it. So really, it's a bonus really that it was done before. So all I've got to replace is the clutch and not the flywheel, or it would have been very expensive. So like I said, there's no worn marks on that flywheel. Yeah, no burn marks or out, so that's a big bonus. So all I'll get is some brake cleaner, clean that flywheel completely off, make sure it's nice and clean of dirt and that. Then we'll fit the new clutch. Good day. Right, this is a carry-on. It's uh, been a split second for you, it's been three weeks for me. Waiting for the clutch kit to turn up and the front shock absorbers and the oil. So the gearbox has been rebuilt, new bearings and so on. This is all the crap what's got replaced. All in the gearbox, that's all the old crap. So yeah, this has been done. This cost me 780 quid to be done, all the bearings and everything else to be done on it. So that's all fresh. All the seals have been done, everything's been done on that gearbox. Clutch kit is here, this is my new one, it's my new slave and that, bits here, and there, yes, I'm not going for a cheap clutch but I want this to last, as I'm not sure if I'm going to get rid of the van after summer, get rid of it, sell it, buy something new and redo it all again. I was thinking of a Luton van next, not sure, might keep this, not sure yet. That's the future. So this is the old slave right there. As you can tell the difference between them. So yeah, definitely a better slave cylinder than that. So what I'm going to do today, as I've only got a few hours each day to try and get some of this done, as I'm doing other cars, plus got work as well. So today, all I'm going to do is fit the slave cylinder on, get it ready, so I can get the clutch fitted tomorrow, and get the gearbox bolted up tomorrow, hopefully. For you, it's just going to be one complete video. For me, it's going to be over the next few days I think all depends how much time I get so yes yeah, so first things first let's get this slave bolted on to you so what you want to do slide on your new slave and put your 10 mil bolts back in
So as you can see, the tube's all back in. Just pull this clip out here, push the tube in, and it seals in like that. It can only go one way really, because you've got these little hooks. What are they there? What hook on? Well, just go behind the lip and your gearbox there. So yeah, I'll leave that in until I go to fit the pipe. Leave that on there so nothing goes in. So yeah, make sure these are nice and tight. That's your sleeve in. Gearbox ready to go on. Next thing is going to be the clutch. Well, I'm running out of time. I've got to go shower and get ready for work. So tomorrow we'll be fitting the clutch. Well, giving a flywheel clean down, fitting the clutch. Hopefully get this gearbox sat back on with a couple of bolts in before I have to go to work. Because then hopefully the following day I can get of that all built back up. Get the clutch bled and hopefully fingers crossed I have all gears and it's sweetie as pie. So yeah, for me, I'll see you tomorrow. For you, it'll be in a moment. So here's my clutch. Nice chunky bit on that. Right on your clutch, as you see, mine says flywheel side here. It means this side goes to the, or the flywheel. That's it, drop it and break it, J. That side goes towards your basket. So, yeah, sometimes it will say this is away, oh, T gearbox side. Or it will say on the other side, like this one, flywheel side. Show me the clutch. I'm sure, this says to gearbox side. There you go. Gearbox side. Right, as you can tell there, already no grooves left in that clutch. Compared to this clutch. That. So yeah, definitely needs a doing. So like I say, always check on there, it tells you which way to put it. Some clutches say gearbox side, some say flywheel side. So this is the tool I've got. I brought one of these. Off of the old flea bay, a couple of quid. Uh, these go through your basket into your clutch and tighten up. So, what you want to do is see which one, see, mine comes with three connectors. Which one just goes in to bite your clutch like that? So, when you turn it up, it holds it. Then just change whichever one fits. And how to change these is you want to screw that in there. Try to anyway do this one handed. Change that there. That middle bar comes out of there. Out like that at the centre, and you just swap to whichever one fits inside your clutch. There, I normally find it's these, but do be careful, they do break easy. This must be my third, fourth one, so yeah, just be careful with them because they do break pretty easy. But for four quid, I uh, don't really do clutches that often, I'll probably do one, two a year. So, each year I'll probably buy a new one of these because these do. I normally break them because I throw them in a drawer or something out of the way, throw crap on them and end up breaking them. But for four quid, I ain't bothered. Even if you just get one use out of it, just get a clutch set up cheap enough. You can go out and buy the proper expensive tool, what will last you, if you're going to keep doing clutches over and over. But like I say, I probably do a clutch once, twice a year, if that. 
I try not to do clutches on customers' cars. Take too long, and to be fair, I cannot be bothered to do clutches. I'm going to do it on here because it is my van and it needs to be done. So, yeah, so there we go. I say set your clutch cheap eBay clutch setup up. So, all you do after you've done that, you see the little slits in it. The slits obviously go to the end here, so when that pulls in, it opens your slits to hold it just like in the bedroom apartment. So that pushes in there, like that. So it goes through like that. Then you just tighten this back onto there. So, what you want to do, you want to poke it through the front like that. Make sure your clutch is the right, right way, this supply wheel size, so bonus. And you want it just so that plastic is just poking there try and get it as level as possible and to adjust that turn this one here turn it to tighten it let's look at this and it will pull it through you see it moving as i'm tightening it so yeah that's that and what you want to do is you want to tighten this outside one up and while you're turning this one up, turning this to tighten this, that will tighten that and pull that in. What separates the legs and holds it inside. And while you're doing that, is you want to try and make sure this clutch is level, equal all the way around. So, yeah. so as you can see, it's pulled it inside. So this is pretty stiff to move. What you want to do, you see that lip all the way around there, you want to make sure that's kind of level all the way around. So you got this the same depth on that lip all the way around. So that looks like it there, bang on. So this tool will hold that clutch in place there level where you bolt this onto your flywheel and when you bolt it and tighten it all down then you undo your tool and your clutch plate will stay in place so it's all nice and level to slide your gearbox in so yeah i think that all looks bang on to me the other problem is when you get a bit of shadow and that it don't look as deep but yeah it is. So you just gotta make sure that lit is level all the way around. So yeah, there's that. Next job, let's get the flywheel cleaned and get this clutch bolted to it. So what I've done is just gone over it with a bit of sandpaper. <laughs> gone all the way around here so there's no rust. Just scruff it up all nice and smooth no dips or rope in it so yeah if you start getting big dips in that you can get your yeah, uh, flat disc grinder on it and just try and smooth it out a bit or replace the flywheel but mine's nice and smooth all the way around got some brake cleaner on it cleaned it all up so now it's time to fit the clutch So after you make sure your clutch is nice and level all the way around the edges, all it is, is putting it back on. A bit of a pain.
So you got a couple in. Yeah, all good. Just hold it in place. Yeah, so put the six bolts back into place, tighten it up. Once you've got it nice and tight, you can release your tool, and that's your clutch fitted. So there we go, that's the clutch all bolted up. And the tool's removed, you see in there, nice and level, ready for the gearbox to slide in. I see I've left these two bolts in so when I lift the gearbox up it'd be easier to just locate on and hold up there while I put a bolt in so yeah so all I've got to do now go stick some brake fluid into the uh, slave cylinder just top it up a bit so it's not too much of a bitch to bleed Took the, all these wires and pipes all out of the way just to make it easier to slide the gearbox up. Then we'll fit the gearbox. So, what I do <coughs> is pull this little cap off here. Pull this out, pull the little cap off. Just get a funnel or something like that just so you get fluid in. Then, your slave, push it in, hold it in. Just top it up slightly with a bit of fluid and release your slave slowly so it sucks it in. Then slowly push it back in. I mean really slowly so you don't force all the fluid out. When you got it up again, top it up. Just just a bit at a time. Let it back out slowly so it draws it all in. Then slowly push it back up till you can't get no more in. When you can't get any more in, then you know that pipe and everything's full. You will get some spillage out of it. So, yeah. But this is what happens when you push it up a bit too quick. It forces it out. But that's how you know when it's full as well. When you slowly lift it up, it pushes the air out. And if it's just pumping pure fluid out as you slowly lift it up, you know that pipe's full and the air's out of it. So all I'm going to do now is put the cap back in. This little white cap will come with it. Clip it back on. Hopefully that will stop most of the fluid leaking out while I'm trying to put the gearbox back on. But at least I know now I've got fluid in that pipe and I'm going to struggle to get fluid into it and get air out of it when I go to bleed the system. So yeah, so all I'm going to do now put cap on, clip this back in, lift this heavy beast back outside and hopefully try and lift it up put it back on and put a bolt in I ain't gonna film trying to put lift this back up because there ain't no room to try and film and lift this and get a bolt in at the same time so I'll come back when it's back on the van or well, when the gearbox is on uh, I've got about an hour left so I want to get this on and a couple of bolts in so it's holding because it's going to rain tonight and the new clutch is on so I want it covered up then hopefully tomorrow get it finished off get the fluid topped in and bleed but for you it'll be seconds so back in the mo. so with a wife helping hand nearly divorced but it's back on still well it's all bolted on now uh, when you push your gearbox because you've free oiled your slave it does leak out a bit when it's pushing against your slave so don't worry about that so yeah there we go gearbox is all bolted back onto the engine so while it's down like this what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the linkage up the wires connect everything up to it so it saves me struggling from the top then what I'll do is put the mount back up bolt the mount back on and bolt, well lift the engine back up 
so then it's on the engine mats. Then I can top it up with fluid. Well, top the gearbox up with fluid. Put the drive shafts back in and start rebuilding it. But for today, I'm gonna leave it there. Like I say, I'm getting an hour, a couple of hours a day to do this around other jobs and around work. So yeah, just keep nipping at it and it'll get done. But that's the biggest job. So all it is now is building it all back together. So, as you can tell, got all my linkage all up now. Everything's connected. All the parts connected and everything. It's all bolted up. So, to bleed the system, make sure your clutch pedal is up and on the end here that rubber cap pull that off there like that then what you want to do is make sure your pedal is up then turn this anti-clockwise all the way around till you just get constant fluid coming out don't touch the pedal just let it flow out it may take a bit but you want it to self bleed so it comes all the way up down your pipe so you can get full well so you can get fluid coming out turn it back clockwise go check your pedal pump it a few times see how it feels then come back out do it again so you get constant fluid so you get constant fluid and there's no air coming out you know it's bled yeah so that's how you bleed you clutch pretty simple really no nuts bolts nothing all you do is turn it by hand that's it turn it by hand and it'll self done itself bleed itself don't pump your pedal while you're trying to bleed it just let it do it itself unless you've changed the master cylinder as well then that's a complete new ball game that is but yeah if you're just doing it like this that's how you do it so yeah you just put your cap back on. So yeah, that's how you do gearbox and clutch and a Renault Master 2.5. Yeah, I've got to fill it up with oil yet, but I'll do that another day as I've still got jobs to do while the engine's down like this. Yeah, I'll run a cable, well, a wire, all the way through to the cab to the front because I'm looking at putting spotlights. So while the engine's down like this, I can get up the wire and leave the cable tie and the wire up. So there we go. So to fill it up, I think it's 2.4 litres to fill the gearbox up with oil. I'm not sure, I'll have to check the spec. But I'll do that when it's all bolted up and it's all back together. Uh, just get a bit of pipe, funnel, Put your pipe in the hole and just put the correct amount of oil in. Don't go over. So there we go. I ain't going to film any more of doing this. It's just rebuild everything back up. Uh, I've got to do a CV boot the other side, so that'll be on a different video, I think, if I get around to filming that. So yeah, all you're doing is putting everything back together. And uh, just how you stripped it. So I hope this has helped. Yes, I hope this has helped people out. Like I say, the hardest part is lifting that gearbox back up and putting it back on. So the next video will probably be me doing a CV boot on the driver's side as it's leaking. So before I put that in, I will be changing the CV boot on that. Yeah, I've got a split and glue one and I've got a prop one as well, so I don't know which way I'm going yet. Uh, not sure we'll see so yeah i'm gonna leave it there for today catch you next time stay safe